15 years ago, the name of an unknown singer burst upon the international opera scene when Herbert von Karajan engaged Hildegard Behrens to perform Salome at the Salzburg Festival. Behrens, the daughter of two German physicians, had trained to be a lawyer. At the age of 30, she decided to become a singer. Her rise to international stardom has been spectacular. Each new role from Leonora under Karajan to Ariadne under Karl Böhm has been a sensation. This is the voice we have been waiting for, youthful, large and true, wrote Harald Rosenthal after her Covent Garden debut in Fidelio. Behrens has quickly become one of the great modern interpreters of Wagnerian roles. Her extraordinary stage presence and her passionate involvement have made her one of the most spellbinding performers on the present-day opera stage. After her triumph as Brunhilde in Bayreuth under George Scholte, a critic wrote, Behrens Brunhilde is the ring's palpitating center, her appeal to Wotan, her greeting to the new dawn in Siegfried, and her noble expression of the cycle's meaning in the final scene are unforgettable. A very private person, the mother of a teenage son and a small daughter, Behrens has consistently refused to be drawn into the limelight. In this program, we follow her through three new opera productions. Alban Berg's Wozzeck at the Vienna State Opera under Claudio Abado, Strauss Elektra at the Paris Opera under Seiji Ozawa, and the Munich Festival's Ring under Wolfgang Savalisch. In the spring of 1987, Behrens prepared herself in Paris for one of the great roles of the 20th century opera repertoire, Elektra by Richard Strauss. The story of the vengeance of Orest and Elektra for the murder of their father, Agamemnon. The opera was directed by Hildegard Behrens husband, the American Thess Schneidmann. And uh, before the cut, what was it? Uh, the Zerige Welt. Ah, uh, what was it? Du Bruder Tal. I go a little slow. Oh, yeah, then you were a little song. Da, da, da. Da, 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 da. Und, und was da schaust du ängstlich um dich? Sprich doch. Sprich. Ah, no. Oh, no, Sprich zu mir. Da, 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 da. I'm going to lie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, then it's okay. What happened now? Finish this one? No, no now we're going to do the, we're going to go back to the point where the, the, they recognize Orest and she takes off the helmet. Aha. Orest asleep. Yeah. Wenn du dich regst, verrätst du ihn. Das ist der Frage, wo ist der? Er ist unversehrt wie ich. So rett ihn doch, bevor sie ihn erwürgen. Meines Vaters Leichnam, dazu kam ich her. Was ist denn du? Okay, now, as soon as she says there's a spin to do, they've got to be here, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, you could you could notice them, right? You what? Could, you could see yeah, them. Yeah, I see them, and, but I don't yeah. want to realize that because yeah. I know already it just can't be true, you know? Okay, now, how is he going to...
what are the most important ingredients of your performance? What would you ultimately like to achieve? That I become a medium. And that I get myself out of the way, my, pro my private ego out of the way and become the most transparent uh, instrument for what this role has to, to be. But it's also quite a frightening task because if one becomes a medium for these gigantic figures, that doesn't frighten you sometimes a little bit? It does, yes, it does. And, and um, I've especially experienced that with Bruin Held and Ghetto Demon's second act. It's frightening, yes, it's, that's true. And on the other hand, when you say gigantic in effort and um, mental and physical impact, that when you are on the on the point, it at the same time becomes kind of becomes a kind of uh, weightless or transparent, and the the energy comes as you spend it. That's too fast, Sadie. I thought you wanted it a little. Slower. I thought you wanted it a little slower. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't hear very well. Huh? Is that a faster tempo? Oh, yes, faster than the orchestra. And then the orchestra. Maybe. Because then with the movement. I see. Maybe then I need a little. Maybe orchestra with it a little bit slower. Not too much slower. This is the tempo. Yeah. We need a little faster. When I can make these movements, uh -huh. I need the time. time. A little bit. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I love Hildegard uh, as a person, also as a musician. Musicianship, I should say. Uh, I worked with her first Fidelio, Salome, and the Erbartung, and now the Electra. And I saw her Tosca. Um, like uh, the, his, her uh, approach to the music. It, 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 you see, I'm not talking, uh, uh, I'm not a specialist for the opera, so I, I'm not the person to tell you, but uh, what I know is, you know, the singer lives their own life. The vo voice is very important, the character of the voice is important, and what kind of, uh, of uh, uh, um, character in opera is good for my voice, all this kind of thing. She has different approach. She comes first, then what composer write, notes, words, character, and she goes, just jump into that character. Then she forget what she uh, she is, and so that happened. Uh, um, uh, Salome, that happened. Uh, Fidelio, that happened. Uh, Erbartung Schoenberg. Now this one, to me, she does it so straight. So um, she has guts to approach this Strauss so directly and forget about the danger of voice. Forget about about the danger of uh, um, missing that note. She just go in music. So it's like, actually, she's like an instrumentalist, you know? When instrumentalist, good instrumentalist, violinist, cellist, say Rostrovovich, he doesn't afraid if she, he may miss that note. He just jump in.
as you yourself told me once, uh, the longer the evening, the, the better it gets. I think the, the operas are built the way that um, they build up. And I feel with, uh, with these big roles, whether it's Isolde or Brunhild or Elektra, that um, I'm a long distance singer. And uh, so the, the more I spend, the more energy comes back to me. And uh, so if I, if I go with the role, it's, uh, you know, I was warned in the beginning of my career by experts who said, like, my first Wagnerian role was uh, Elsa Lohengrin, and said, you know, here you take it easy, there you might just move your mouth because everybody sings unisono. And I found that uh, um, very confusing and um, irritating. And then I found out that if you stay on the on the drama, on the expression, on the uh, emotional situation, uh, the the composition carries you, and it's it's like a jumbo, you know. If you what takes the most energy is, you know, getting up and landing, getting up. Once you're up there, it's, uh, it's much better to stay up there. After her triumph in Paris, Behrens went to Vienna to prepare the role of Marie in Albenberg's powerful music drama, Wozzeck, in which the composer expressed his profound compassion for the poor. Behrens gave a disturbing performance as Wozzeck's unfaithful wife. The opera was directed by Adolf Dresen and conducted by Claudio Abado. Aber die Pharisäer brachten ein Weib zu ihm, so im Ehebruch lebte. Ich 
actually enter the stage. At that very moment when uh, the, the stage fever, the nervousness before the anxiety comes to a kind of combination and you jump off, there's no way back and um, then you are of heightened awareness this is the adrenaline and you sense the space and the, the space beyond the orchestra, beyond the curtain and um, you sense the temperature, I would say the erotic temperature which is a chemistry of uh, communication and understanding between you and, and the audience and in the um, collaboration with your partners and the more you can forget yourself and factors that uh, uh, have nothing to do with the thing itself, the, the more temperature you create and I experience that it comes back from your partners, it comes back from the orchestra, from the conductor, from, from the audience and and uh, you start climbing the, the pyramids. Is this a very erotic experience? Very erotic. In the sense of, I guess, of, of uh, love and uh, being on mission for one thing and helping each other and enjoying the thing with each other. Yes. I got the feeling that while the days go on, you become more and more the part, even off stage. Yeah, that's, um, you know, people have told me that in a certain role I look small and um, slim. Or friends who watch me uh, getting ready for performance in my dressing room, they tell me that I somehow change into what they think is my idea of the role. When I prepare for rehearsals, I dress myself in the direction what I think my outer appearance should, should look like. And uh, that is probably already the first step into a kind of identification. But I see myself when I do things, I see them sometimes, from, not sometimes, but always, also at the same time from the outside. When I did the Tristan in, in Munich, the image of myself was uh, with Tristan was a Pietà, was a Madonna. And when I saw photos uh, from the final dress, whatever, I thought that my hands looked the way I wanted them to, to look. I think if you experience um, those uh, kubernetic or whatever, you know, transcendental uh, experiences, you're astonished every single time they happen. And all together, for me, it's uh, it's not astonishing at all. You're not frightened? No, no not frightened. No, I, I, I enrich myself and I, I enjoy them. But I think that the, if a person in panic, frightened to death, uh, that the adrenaline enables you to jump over a uh, three meter high wall. Nobody knows how you got, but you did get over. Weiß noch Marie, wie 
wie lang es jetzt ist, dass wir uns kennen. Zu Pfingsten drei Jahre. Und was meinst, wie lang es noch dauern wird? Ich muss fort! Fürst dich, Marie, und bist doch Frau und gut und Meister, what are the specific qualities of Hildegard Behrens? What makes her so different? You know, there are many aspects. I think Hildegard, when, first, when she comes in, she arrives for the first year. She's always very well prepared, very professional. No? And she's a great artist who knows exactly what she's doing, very intelligent. So every time I think she knows the characterization of the personage. For example, now in Wozzeck, Marie, we're done already to, together in, in Chicago. And every time she finds new things, we find new things together. She's playing on, on stage like a great actress. If you couldn't sing, what would you do? People often said to me, oh, you have your law degree, so you can be a lawyer. And I said, I would never want to be a lawyer. Um, I'm happy that I did it, and it has enriched me enough, but I don't want to do that all the time. And then I would rather work with children as a um, kindergarten, something like that. That interests me very much, and I think it's a very rewarding thing. Now, I, after I have two children of my own, um, I, would, I would act. You also once, are... I mean, once you get the... Bacillus of theatre, that's it, you know. Hildegard Behrens many international engagements often prevent her from attending all rehearsals. After singing at the Metropolitan Opera in New York, she returned to Munich to resume her work on the ring cycle 
with the director Nicholas Lehnhoff. The musical direction was by Wolfgang Savalisch. Okay, also die Situation ist folgende, es geht der Vorhang später auf. Wotan betritt sein Feld. Ja, der geht ist aber von Anfang an drin, ne? Der ist von Anfang an drin. Der geht nur die Treppe hoch, ja, wird sich sein Pentagon anschauen und dann, nein, nun zäume dein Ross, du bist im Anfang damit beschäftigt, hier diese Computerzeichnungen zu lesen und sich, dich darüber zu amüsieren, sie aufzureißen, wegzuwerfen. Und wenn er dich dann anspricht, ja, dann reagierst du und dann gehst du herüber zu deinem Spiel. Much of the first day's piano rehearsal is spent going through the scenes and marking the positions. Cherubino, like in between female and uh, masculine. things does one hear oneself totally clearly how the, the voice appears and um, what passes you feel, your you mind? Feel it. You feel it inside and you shouldn't listen too much because then you you miss like a rally and then you miss uh, the upcoming things you should never listen because that is kind of but it happens anyhow it, it happens kind of simultaneously how as your ear is always correcting intonation constantly are you sometimes surprised by what comes out? Sometimes I'm surprised. But uh, I think that my environment is more surprised than I am. And, and uh, I have, I have got a, gotten a lot of uh, advice from colleagues, from experienced colleagues, don't use too much chest voice. And say, I'm sorry, I have to do what I have to do. And uh, the I am a great... Um, 
What do you say? Uh, anhänger. Um, yes, a great follower. Follower of Bekanto, of course, and I try to. Actually, I try to sing words like Salome, Erwartung Schönberg, my Wozzeck, the most by Kanto that possible. And then if I sing Mozart and Beethoven, I try to get as, as much uh, true expression and guts into a music which sometimes is uh, considered as you know, purely by Kanto, or when it becomes La Pola, I think then for me, it, it misses something which is uh, very precious. Yeah. It's better if you come in to me, but that's where we did it last time. You come in to me like that, and then I'm on top of you, and then I'm going to put you away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but when I come like this, you just. Weil er weicht jetzt er mit weicht Sigmund. Jetzt bei dir aus. Ne? Weicht er jetzt nach vorne? Ja, dann ist das hier auch ja? Natürlich ist es mir nicht, aber dann mache ich es. Du bist zu spät aufgestanden. Du kannst etwas nee, ich will, ne, früher, ich will nicht früher aufstehen. Da ja, muss ich halt ein bisschen, aber ein bisschen nimm doch einfach den Impuls Nimm doch den Impuls dazu. Ja, ne? Wir das machen, haben das so aufgeschrieben, wie es wie, wie Ich muss es ja nicht unbedingt so machen, wie es aufgeschrieben ist. Nein, nur, die ja anderen sind davon wieder abhängig jetzt. Er ist in seiner ganzen Nein, nein, ich gehe jetzt dann weiter rüber. You take a long time to prepare yourself for a role. It depends. I, I like to do that, but I, I often don't have the time. If I have to, or I think I have to, I can learn very fast. I don't like it so much because I like it if it's really digested and um, becomes part of yourself before you start doing it, even rehearsals.
I don't think you're someone who likes half measures. As an actress in life, as a singer. I always uh, try to expand, expand. The more you grow, the more you want to grow. That's, I mean, and so far, I mean, I, I try to to reach, uh, or to reach, if possible, the limits of my actual capacity. And then I find out that once that is established, then I want more. You know? Sometimes it must appear to you like your your professional life is like a miracle. I mean, step it to is. step. It is, and it's a huge luxury, I think, to do what you really love to do, and uh, I mean, to, to live these roles. As you said, it's uh, with those characters like Electro, it's, it's very scary, and um, but it's, it's such a, I mean, you live so many lives. It's unbelievable. Is there something in you which draws you to these parts, which are almost going to the limit of what people can bear? Absolutely. That's like a catharsis, you know. It's like you're going through it in, in the truthful context. That's why we need art, that's why we need theatre, because it washes our own daily and lasting sufferings out and we can we can see ourselves in the mirror and um, there's that beauty and that truth which shine, shines through. I've never seen any singer who was able to project that intensively from the inside without making any kind of a broader effect, you know, is so moving, so touching. Here, with this complexity of this character in, in, in uh, Brunhilde, that's what keeps Hilga going. She can really go into it and see the richness of this character. It's a combination and the most um, beautiful and complete moment in her life was Siegfried. It's very touching how she awakes and finds out that she is not a goddess anymore. before you start your concert and get what she feels. It's absolutely a dream then to transform both ideas because it's the most beautiful give and take you can imagine. Does she work well under pressure? I think she needs pressure. She needs pressure. Um, she likes to, to, to work, I mean, to rehearse. But then comes a certain moment, you know, where she feels we are circling. And she is circling, and you must feel this moment. And uh, for the last uh, uh, stadium of a production, absolutely it needs this escalation of, um, how shall I put it, you know, of. Um, Tempi and mood and mood and pressure, you know, and I think uh, uh, she is uh, asking for it, you know. She needs this last uh, uh, of a champagne bottle, you know, when the, uh, what is the cork, you know, uh, pops out. Pops out. <laughs> Oh, 
everyone should be truthful, but you rarely meet this these days. You see the mechanics, you know, in a lot of wonderful singers. But with Hildegard, if she uh, seizes you into the part, because she doesn't have mechanics, she starts instinctively the part. In rehearsals where she is absolutely marking, not singing, the way she uh, transforms uh, everyone, I mean us sitting there, has something so truthful. decides to destroy Valhall, this uh, false, guilty, blown up uh, institution. And she gives the ring, which is a symbol for uh, strive for power, back to the, to the elements and with her own sacrifice to give the um, possibility of a new beginning. to me, the long I live, that everything in my life lined up for what I'm doing now, for what I have to do. I always knew that I could do everything. <laughs> it's, it sounds ridiculous, but when I, um, during my singing studies, which were quite um, delicate, because I, I had a long ongoing descent with my singing teacher, because uh, it was like a vicious circle. She was super cautious. That was one reason why I chose her as my uh, singing professor. On the other hand, I have always to, you know, I have always to feel the, and to stretch the edges and to feel the extremes. And so I hardly dared to, uh, I thought if she hears me how I practice, so against all this, she would fire me from, from singing class. And in the vacation, the, um, when I helped at home and the, 
in the medical thing, and we had this big house for ourselves. So at night, I started practicing, and I howled like an animal. And then suddenly, it was like, it's, I don't know, um, I've never heard any tape from that time. I, I don't know how that sounded, but I can still uh, remember that feeling that by like stretching, maybe like in a sports person, if you almost overstretch, everything fell like a mobile into, the, into balance. And then I could do everything I wanted to do with a, with a voice. So I knew I can do everything. to your own personality and to your own life. Yeah, because I enjoy doing them and I think they... It might be even that um, things that you cannot allow yourself or that you don't encounter in your life that you might be able to live out certain things on stage, although that is a little bit... Um, 
ambivalent because I don't like if somebody takes the stage to live out personal lacks. I mean, in, so, but I think to experience things and to give in my understanding from what I experience in life to make those figures living persons um, and I have the fun of uh, feeling when it's right and, and doing them. So I enrich myself and I enrich one, well I do Tosca or Fia um, <coughs> Ligi or Fortsek and I find uh, similarities in their situations and feelings since everything in opera is about love and hate and jealousy and death and fright and pleasure. I mean, it's just obviously the basic things anyhow that we're dealing with. Where do you think your real life is happening? Is it on stage or off stage? Both. I have a very rich personal life and a very rich uh, artistic life. <laughs>